Voss, artesian water from Norway. Splendidly still or luxuriously sparkling. Voss, artesian water from Norway. Want to learn from Chicago's number one culinary arts school? Kendall College now offers a certificate training program and individual cooking classes. Go to taste.kendall.edu for more information. and you are at Fear No Art Presents the Dinner Party. And what I do on this show is I invite three celebs and a known chef who cooks for us. Sounds pretty good. But he also is cooking for everyone in the audience. So tonight we have Chef Pete Conan of The Gage. Yes, very exciting. He's going to be making some great stuff for us. We also have Vos chocolate and wine from City Winery. I can see everyone's already started on their wine, which is great. So you guys are in on the dinner with us, but that's not all. You're also in on the conversation. So pull out your handy dandy cell phones, get your Twitter mojo going, and tweet us your questions at Dinner Party CHGO. So we changed our Twitter handle. It's now Dinner Party CHGO and tweet in your questions for everyone on the stage. And if your question is picked by my lovely social media director, Ali Drum, sitting right over there, um, you can win dinner for two at the Gage, tickets to the Goodman Theater, CDs, Vos chocolate, a huge box, $60 box of Vos chocolate. So there are good reasons to be Twittering in your questions. But you have a little bit of competition. We are streaming tonight live. You can see our cameras. We are on the wonderful Sun Times Splash website. If your friends were not lucky enough to get tickets tonight, you can tell them that they can watch us tonight at chicagosplash.com dinner party. And we are welcoming all our viewers tonight on the Sun Times Splash section website. We love them. So they're going to be competing with you for some tweets, but you want to sort of keep it going. It'll be very fun to have you part of the conversation with us. So while you all pull out your cell phones and get set up, I'm going to take this time to thank my sponsors because I love them. So I'm thrilled tonight to have Voss Artesian Water from Norway here with us. You can see these lovely glass bottles on your table. We also have Vos Chocolate, David's Tea, the very best cooking school in the land. Kendall College is in the house, and they're talking about their cooking classes and selling cookbooks right over at a table at, um, right over there. So after the show, you can hang out with them and learn stuff about them. And then, of course, the wonderful Sun-Times, our partners in crime for celebrity things that happen in Chicago. We love the Sun-Times, and Windy City Times is also a fan of ours. So, okay, you should be all set up. I have one little point of logistics to talk about. On your tables, if you can find it with all your wine there, um, there's something that says, fill out your email and tell us what you think about the show. So if you do that, just leave it on the table. We'll come get it later. And uh, you, win a ch you have a chance to win some really good stuff. So we'd love to hear what you think about the show. Please give us your comments. And uh, that's what we do, is we connect with you and we give away good stuff. That's what we do here on this show. OK, no excuses. You should be set up by now. So let me take this opportunity to bring out my first guest, composer, percussionist, and oh yeah, he's the drummer for Wilco, Glenn Kochi. <laughs> Have a seat. Have a seat, fine, sir. You're over there. I'm over there. You're over there. Our next guest, I think everyone knows her, at least between 5.30 and 10 a.m. in the morning. She's the lovely radio host, the co-host of the Eric and Kathy show on The Mix, and she's also, as we'll find out, a very friendly health nut. So let's welcome Kathy Hart. Right here. Right there. Hi. Here. 
Our next guest has been in many movies and many plays, and we're going to talk about his many accomplishments, including two Jeff Awards. I'd like to welcome actor Mark Grapey. Have a seat. Have a seat. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't say that the wonderful Chef Pete Conan is slaving away in the kitchen for us right now. So, of course, Chef Pete Conan's going to be out with us in a little bit. <laughs> Yay. Yay. So, I have a lot to talk to you all about uh -oh. because you all have really interesting careers. And I want to talk to you about that among many other things, but it's hard for me to focus on you when I know that I have good food coming my way. Yeah. So, let's everybody look at the video screens and we'll see what the chef is making for us right now in the kitchen. Hi, my name is Pete. I'm the chef here at the Gage Restaurant on 24 South Michigan, and we're here cooking for you at the dinner party tonight. Today, we're going to be starting off with a spring pea soup with a smoked ham hot consomme. For the spring pea soup, we're starting with a little bit of oil in the pan. We're going to add onion and slivered garlic, and we're just going to sweat that down. Once those become translucent, we're gonna add a little bit of celery. And again, sweat that down, and that's basically our white mirepoix, uh, the base of the soup. We're then gonna add our shucked spring peas, and then a touch of cream, and we're gonna finish it with cold vegetable stock to kinda chill it down, almost like blanch the peas really fast. And once that's cold, we're gonna puree it. Before we put it in the blender, we're just gonna add a touch of ba fresh basil, one sprig of thyme, and some picked mint. So it'll just become very herbaceous. Uh, I think the mint and the basil plays off very well with the peas and the rest of the dish. That'll then get pureed and strained through a chinois. And there we have a spring pea soup. This is our uh, end result on a smoked ham hock consomme. Uh, what we've done is take ham hocks, we've brined them in salt, sugar, and aromatics, and water. Uh, we've then put them in the smoker, and we smoke them at about 150 degrees for about 25 minutes. They come out, and then we build a traditional stock out of that. So basically, we end up with a smoked ham hock stock. Uh, from that stock, we make it into a consomme where we're taking egg whites and other aromatics and we bring it to a simmer and then just let all the uh, impurities come up with the raft and the egg whites and then strain it. And we're left with this really beautiful see-through clarified stock. Uh, we then add gelatin to the stock and that's our smoked ham hock consomme. So we kind of make just a little nest right in the middle of the bowl and this will melt right down as soon as the hot soup hits it and becomes a part of this soup. Next we have our 63 degree quail egg, which we uh, poached in the circulator. We take it out, crack the egg. There's our quail egg, a little bit of fresh sliced radish. Pickled ramp stems, so we took the ramps, those get pickled and grilled. So the ramp stems have a nice tart to them kind of garlicky. And then to finish it off, we're finishing with uh, some nice fresh pea tendrils, locally out of uh, Genesis Farms. So we end up our end product with a spring pea soup that's laced with a little bit of mint and basil. And we're gonna finish it hot over our soup garnish. And that ham hock consomme, that smoke, that salt, the brininess becomes part of that pea soup. And this is our finished product of a spring pea soup, ham hock consomme, and finished with a poached quail egg and pickled ramps. Welcome to the dinner party. Okay, in theory, Chef Pete is coming out. In theory, he's oh. right here to say hello to us. Yay, Chef Pete. Yay. Hello. Great to Hi. have you here. So I want to ask you, how many of you have been to the Gage? Of course, all of you, of course. I was going to say, because if not, I was going to have to take each and every one of you to the Gage. It's one of my very favorite restaurants in the city. 
But I want to ask you your process for creating your dishes, because you were born in Korea, and I wouldn't think that this is naturally your palate, the sort of dishes that you serve at, at yeah. the Gage. But how do you come up uh, with what you serve? So very, very much on seasonality. And I grew up eating cafeteria food. Uh, my, my parents were high school teachers at a private school, so I grew up eating, uh, you know, grits and, yeah. and grits. shepherd's pie and all that. So, you know, a lot of that kind of plays off of old school flavors, but bringing a new light to it. Um, so this dish, we kind of, for the season, we kind of changed it up a little bit than what was on the video. Uh, we actually did a chill today because of the, the weather. Uh, we thought it was appropriate. Um, so the ham hot consomme is smoked, and we kind of changed it up a little bit, gelated it. And uh, so you should get some different textures, uh, bring in some saltiness, touch of smokiness to it. Uh, should play very well off the peas, which are naturally sweet. Uh, and then we do some, finish it with some acid with pickled grilled ramps and pickled mustard seed. And then we bring in kind of a fat content with a poached quail egg. So really playing off of the season, uh, the weather, as well as uh, flavors that are really gonna mesh well together. Salt, uh, smoke, and something a little bit acidy. Hey, if you can get me to eat peas. <laughs> no, seriously. When, so when I told, I have to say, when I told people, and I, I was sort of thinking like, gosh, can I change the title of this? I was telling people that we were gonna have pea soup with ham hock, and everybody was like, Bleh. no. But this, it's really good, isn't it? It's really good it's and fresh and tasty. Yeah, I think it's, it's really a play off of uh, split pea and ham. Yes. Mm. That's what you're looking at. But it has that so. fresh basil, which makes yeah. it lighter than that. Yeah, a little, and, little mint, a little basil. Yes. So now that, I mean, finally, in theory, I think we have spring in Chicago. We may huh. even have summer. We're not really sure. What are we going to see coming up on the menu? Uh, I think you'll see a lot of market-driven items with uh, the green, green City Market coming into play. All the farmers have been down and out throughout the winter. Yes, uh, I know. So Everything's we're really brown, seeing basically. All the farmers uh, come back to life. Uh, so we're hmm. utilizing lots of different farms uh, and Green City Market, we play off uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays, they do it. So we create specials all around Wednesday, Saturday, throughout the week off of Green City Market. Uh, so you definitely see a lot of market-driven uh, cuisine there. Wonderful. Well, okay, so I know that you're busy in the kitchen working on our entrees. <laughs> He's going to be back with us in a little while to belly up to the table. But for now, thank you for coming Sweet. out. Thank you. We'll thank you, everybody, you for coming. We'll see you later Thanks for sure. Awesome. That is awesome. Okay, so I wanted to talk to the three of you uh -oh. about the way that you work. So Mark, of course, is an actor, and you've been on Broadway with Nathan Lane and Matthew Broderick, and you've been in the movie Ali with Will Smith, and while you were sleeping with Sandra Bullock, and you've been in The Odd Couple with Tim Kazarinsky. I mean, you have such a, a, a long history of acting. So I want to talk to you about how you work. And of course, Kathy, I don't know how you do it. She's up at 3.30 in the morning, I think you said, every yeah. morning to make that 5.30 call on the mix. And I want to talk to you about how you work. But first, I really want to talk to Glenn because, oh, <laughs> so, okay, so prolific. I think you've been part of 90 CDs, part, a part okay. of. You have your own four CDs. Adventureland has just come out, and he's going to stick around and sell some later and sign them for everybody. You, of course, are with Wilco, and you just you collaborate so much. You compose. You work with um, Eighth Blackbird. I mean, you're really just so prolific. But what I really want to find out is how you can focus. And what I mean by that is let's watch a really fast 30-second clip. It's when a big assumption in there. Well, back. okay, we'll see about that assumption. When you think drummer, you think that thing over there. Let's see what not Glenn me. does. <laughs> not, 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 not. Let's see what Glenn does when he's not drumming. Delta Touch Duo technology for your kitchen and bathroom. Precisely in tune with every touch. See what Delta can do. Okay. Well, so, that's, a, that's a commercial. It is. A that's what I should be doing. <laughs> <laughs> that you're taking work from me. You I don't go it drum. I don't, you don't see me drumming. This is, this is what I'm talking exactly. about. Learn how to play the kitchen sink. Okay, so I want to know if everything in the world is music, 
Mm -hmm. How do you focus? How do you focus enough to create every anything if every doorbell and bus stop and whistle is music to you? Adderall? Adderall, no. Adderall. sorry. Do you have any? Do I have soup on my mic? You do not okay. have soup. Save it for later. All right. Don't say um, Adderall or I'm unless you've got some. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'd try. I mean, I think if you ask my wife, she'll say I don't focus sometimes, especially when driving and like a song's on and I miss the exit ramp time after time or something like that. But no, I mean, I guess as a percussionist, because we are relegated as the um, noisemaker of the noisemakers of the orchestra or, um, you know, we get to play all the interesting sounds that are, don't get categorized anywhere else as a string or a brass or a woodwind instrument. Um, so I guess, yeah, my, my ears are attuned to lots of different things. I use a lot of different, um, I guess, maybe found percussion and homemade things on my drum kit a lot. Um, and, yeah, I don't know how I focus, though. I think I, I just try and turn it on and off if I can. Just, aren't drummers yeah. just naturally, like, fidgety and... You're always like banging stuff. Yeah, you're no, pretty that's calm. a horrible oh, that stereotype. Weird. Yes. Oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Really? No, you're like um, always fidgety. Like your, your hands and feet are always going. Again, my wife should be up here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, so I think do, I just, you, you know, obviously I have to concentrate things. sometimes. So I do you write things just, down? Constantly. Oh, you do? I'm a list maker and I'm, I, I'm a note taker um, constantly, writing, jotting things down. Well, because I wonder how much of your work is improvisation, and the same for you two. I mean, you, of course, are always working with lines, but everything that you do in the studio must be improvised to some extent. So oh, it's all, yeah, yeah. Unless it's a, an endorsement for, like, no-no or something. We just, yeah, it's, it's all just ad lib. In fact, oftentimes, it's kind of a little secret. A lot of people don't know. Eric prepares the show, a lot of the show, the night before, while I'm out eating and drinking. And, um, <laughs> My kind of thanks, gal. Eric. And so, I mean, oftentimes, when we first start working together, I would be like, okay, are we gonna do this bit, that bit, what are we gonna do? And he prefers to keep me clueless, which I'm really good at, <laughs> and because he just wants my spontaneous reaction. Sure. So if, if we prep things ahead of time and I know what's coming <laughs> up, then you don't get the natural reaction. So he wants my natural reaction. Same with Melissa, who does our traffic. So oftentimes, he, we have no clue what's coming up. We're just along for the ride. God, that's wonderful, because then you don't have any pressure going into it. <laughs> it's great. Yes. It's perfect. What about you? You must be all preparation, no, interpret no improvising. Um, I would, it's not all preparation, but yeah, it, we, we, as an, you know, you, you work with a script. Sure. So you, you stick to the script, or you get um, notes from the stage manager that says, that's uh, that's not the script. What were you saying? You say, well, I, I don't know. I've been doing drugs and I can't be relied just, on. I was trying to have fun, and they said, don't have fun. Just <laughs> please say what's in the script. So, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's not my skill set, you know, which I don't feel, and I actually don't feel comfortable doing it. So it's, um, it, I enjoy having the script as a, you know, as a map to where you're going to go. Yeah. You know, but as I was saying to them earlier, this is like the worst table at a restaurant where just everyone can stare at you. I just want to say that this is the, yes. this is the worst table yes, that, here. That's actually the idea. <laughs> it's you know everyone can just see you chew. You're and doing eat. Yes. Right. You're like doing okay, and you don't have twitch? anything on your face. I have no twitch. Like, anything on no. your teeth? Not yet. No, we're good. No. Oh, uh, see. We're, we're not good. twitching. Well, okay, I already have a tweet. This is to take some of the pressure off you, so okay. you don't have to worry. I already have a tweet for I'm Glenn. I'm code. And this is coming from at Jay Sheridan. And Jay Sheridan has won a signed CD, which yes. is great, from Glenn. And they've also won a case of Voss water, because, you know, if you're around music, you might get thirsty, oh. and uh, you need some Voss water. So the question is, where do you draw influences from as a musician? And is there a method behind how you end up applying them to your own projects? Wow. Um, okay, so the first part was drawing yes, inspiration. Yes, where do you... That comes from everything and anything. Yes. Um, a lot of times, visual art, actually, what? visual art, like oh, visual painting, art. painting, yes. sculpture, stuff like that. Yes. Like, if, if I walk into a, a museum, it sounds horribly pretentious, but if, like, if I walk into an art museum, I'll, I'll have so many ideas that I have to jot down, like, how would I apply that? Or, you know, this, this person made this leap, you know, right. uh, in, in the process. How would I apply that to what I do? Um, movies, literature, books, anything, you know, hanging out, watching my kids play, like, I, anything can, can kind of trigger an idea. Um, 
Yeah, and how do I apply that? It always varies, the process is completely different. Some things are very um, process oriented, some things um, I just have to let the, you know, if I'm composing, let the piece kind of dictate where it's going to go next by what's sounding good, what's not. Um, yeah. So you do improvise, but you also have a, a distinct line that you're following, a distinct vision. It, you know what? It totally depends. Like, I, I love um, improvising and keeping things loose. Like, if I'm in Wilco or my, my longtime duo on Fillmore, especially on Fillmore, you know, we'll... Anything goes with that. You know, I might end up in the audience for most of the show. Oh, uh, wow. People, I might drag people on stage. We never know. But, but I don't like a lot of sound checks and rehearsals with that, which is great because Wilco never rehearses. I like to keep things spontaneous Wilco on never the song. rehearses? Rarely, if ever. Well, yeah. really? Like years, for how long? years in between. Yeah, true, yeah. True. And we have sound checks you go every day. You don't rehearse. Rarely. Like I think we we did uh, last year, and it was the first time in maybe two or three years that we had rehearsed. But if you were going to go but, on tour, like you 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 would just go play the gig. Yeah, because sound checks too. I mean, we have we have gear backstage, so we'll be jamming before the show. We have sound checks every day who for makes an hour. The, who makes the set list? It varies, but typically lately it's been Jeff, uh, our senior Jeff Tweedy makes the set list. Because it, it always, we draw on, um, you know, what did we play the last time we were there? Right. Um, audience requests on the website. And do you know, every, so do you know everything in your catalog? It. Like if, 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 if you were at a Wilco huh, show and right. someone yelled yeah. out like, a passenger side, whatever. Side. Could, yes. it, just like some, you know, like deep track, deep cut, uh -huh. like... Could, you would know, you whatever. It? Could you play it? I, I probably would do pretty okay because I don't have to worry about chords or lyrics. Right. You know, yeah. I'm ah. playing the beat. So you got to keep time, right? <laughs> okay. you, like you can just and, write. You know what, what, and you about, can, right. maybe, maybe about like, I don't know, eight or nine years ago, we did do um, a stand of like six shows where we played everything in the catalog. That's so right. So from that, with this lineup, and it's the same lineup, so from that, we kind of have all those songs um, kind of at, at the ready to where if it's, you know, if they're on the request list for that, for that night, if we sound check and run through them once and sound check or run through it backstage or something, we're ready to go. But, but yeah, so f with, with Wilco or on Fillmore or other projects like that, I like keeping it loose and spontaneous. With composing, it's, you know, it just... It's got to be it's, more rigid. Every piece is different, too. Yes. Wait, you know, some things are written question? all on the computer, some are storyboards, some what? are just That's ideas. Job. I don't no, care. no, no, go. No, no, go right great. ahead. No, is there, like, is, there, like, is there a song like you hate, like that you just like, can't stand playing? <laughs> you know what? Uh, there used to be a lot of them. Um, or just like you're not hate, but, <laughs> a lot but of now them? Like, yeah, you're just I think tired I, I of, I you know? I'm mellowing with age, and yeah. so I'm a lot more receptive to them. But um, some, yeah, some I'm not like thrilled. Like, here we go play, again. But at the same time, what when are you're they? on stage I want to know something of, you're not thrilled to play. Yeah, I'm not going to take Like, the first one comes <laughs> back. I don't know, right? You have to fall for that. Oh. No. What about oh, when you guys No, but when you're on stage and there's a couple thousand people there and they paid money, I mean, it's hard, to, it's hard yeah, not to get the energy must adrenaline. get you. Yeah, yeah, and you're playing it with guys that you really mm. respect and like playing with. So um, even, I think even when it's maybe not my favorite song, I... I can prevent phoning it in. You just go through the motions yeah. and... I, you know, I know a lot of people, a lot of other musicians who say that that happens a lot of times, but like for me, I'm luckily so far... You're into it. Um, I, I get into it. I think, yeah, being on the stage, I Do get you guys into ever it. get in, I mean, uh, touring, especially on the tour bus, you have to get uh -huh. in arguments, like brothers, I right? Do you fight like brothers? I have you a brother. must. Sisters. Girl fights are way worse than... Brother yeah, fights. occasionally. Yeah. Creative yeah, in the studio. Sometimes there's creative disagreements, things like that. But we're all pretty, pretty Did you chill. Get out or you just That's yell what? or pull hair? No, I mean I've been in <laughs> really dysfunctional bands, and I think Wilco had that in its in its past and its history. But uh, but this particular lineup, which has been together for eight or nine years or maybe longer, um, we all are, we all get along. Maturing we all know how age. to work together. We all respect each other enough. So I think any disagreements like that, we either yeah. uh, get and through them or we just so avoid them. Yeah. I think it's awesome. You go to you go to career <laughs> day, your kids' school, yeah. you're yes. a rock star. It's, it's fucking yeah. great. How cool so is that? It's the best. Yeah. That's that is great. Cool. <laughs> well, the amazing thing is you have so much more going on than just Wilco. And I think most people probably, raise your hand if, if you just know him from Wilco. Okay, so most people, you know, probably just know what you do from but Wilco. But you didn't but ask. Raise your hand if you even know him. Raise your hand if you ever heard of him. Raise your hand if you ever heard of him. We need, we need a, a major. Like, <laughs> Where's your control in this experiment? Well, you're, so wait, you're also doing things with Rick Bayless, right? Yeah. Explain your project with Rick Bayless. Um, well, it's still, it's still happening. It's still developing. But basically, when I was on his, How you doing? Uh, Steve Delinsky and and Rick have a podcast. Yes, a food uh, the feet. Yes. Yeah. The feet. And yeah. I was a guest on that, and he. He proposed a, a music food pairing, uh -huh. which um, 
you know, I think I've, I've heard of it being done before, but maybe a little more kind of stock, a jazz trio or something like that, which yeah. I think could get pretty cliche and obvious. But um, I, I did have the idea, like, I would love to, I'd love to do that, but make it more of a sound installation. Um, and Rick is really into the idea. So I think we're going to just see if it works um, at, at a private event uh, for his foundation yes. uh, nice. later in the summer. But, yeah. uh, can, but basically, it's like processing sounds. Can we, come? Can we sounds. all come? Yes, all 150 of us. <laughs> uh, we'll hey, you've got to talk to Rick. I don't, even know, I don't even know if I can be there, but yeah. <laughs> well, you're um, also doing singing. So it's like processing of, uh, sound and rhythms and stuff like that and um, using a kitchen. lot of technology from the kitchen, from the preparation and from the diners eating and letting that trigger so it's more of a sound installation. So we it. should have audioed. I'll, I'll have the audio from this. And you can work that in if you want. I no pressure. Uh, for that? <laughs> yes. Well, okay. I'm just saying you never know. <laughs> sure. All of our if audio here, sure. you never know. Sure. Okay. You're I will remix it. You might not be happy, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're also doing a sound installation at the Aaron Packer Gallery. Yeah, well, that's um, Ian Schneller's um, yes. amazing speaker sculptures. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's going, uh, it's going on now, I think, through the end yeah. of May. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and he makes these uh, from specimen products. He makes these incredible um, sculptures that are also functioning speakers and yes. horns. And they, some twirl around, some um, are small, some are huge. They make, you know, it's, it's really visually arresting. Um, and for this particular show, he's using my new record, Adventureland, and uh, an EP that's yet to be released, that'll be released next month um, for the different sets of speakers as Mark. music for it. <laughs> well, well, I think there's great so I've been obvious. a fan of his for a long time. <laughs> Sorry. Drunk already, are we? No, we're Is this just corner already no, drunk? No, because Mark, he's, he's, refill already. he's like doing art installations and drama. I'm like, I did a Sounds play. Very smart. I'm just, I'm just, you know. What the, <laughs> 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 well, why don't we have you perform? That's a great idea. Oh, good. Are you ready now? Sure. Go right ahead. Oh, We've got awesome. some drinking to do at the table, so we'll let you go ahead and perform. Do you have earplugs? Uh, no. Could get loud. Give me that loud. Oh, great. Should I oh, move and we're over? right next to it. Okay, I'm going to move over. This is great. Sure. Come I'm over gonna, here. <laughs> so I can see. I need to get to warm up. I thought you don't need to rehearse. I was going to say, Good this one. is where you go. shine. No oh. rehearsal. Okay. <laughs> what do you put the wristband things on for? What's that? Sweat. What do you put the wristband things on for? Sweat. Just sweat? Okay. Sweat. All right. Sweat. Sure, we're gonna see a sweat anyway. Okay. I'm gonna eat Woo! your roll. <laughs> no pressure. I'm drinking your wine and eating your roll. We're while eating you're your roll while you drum. <laughs> yeah. Here you go. There's so much there.
was impressive. That was, that was great. How do you do Incredible. all that at the same time? How do you remember it? Before I forget, I have to thank Victor Salazar. Yes. Yes, we love Victor Salazar. Yeah. So setting up our drum set for us, we were having a little bit of a panic because we didn't know if we'd have one, and he came in in a pinch. So thank you for that. That's unbelievable. So that was I, great. How do you I, remember? Let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> let's have dessert and then let's and just keep let talking you, to I him. Know, just let him drum. <laughs> God, that was great. That was so fucking I, great. I want to ask you. We maybe have lost your mic. I don't know. <coughs> have we were lost you, like, the mic? Drumming so hard that you. Yes, you've drummed your broke mic. Your out. microphone. You blew it out, dude. I think he did, actually. God. Isn't that... Th sure, Mike, but that He's out. Weird. Yeah. What now? Oh, we, we could... Sure, Mike, yeah, that might oh. be a little weird. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Well, well, maybe we'll get you the chef handheld if Rachel's around. Maybe we'll get that in the interim. That way, at least you can talk. Um, so I, I want to ask you... Are you already sweaty just from that? I'm sweating. Look at that. Well, it's hot in here. The air conditioning is stopped working. Um, How's that? That's much oh, better. Oh, wow. That's, that's much that better. Oh. That was great. Talk so, to you for that was impressive. So I find myself <laughs> to a lot of your music kind of bopping my head and keeping the beat. And I wonder, what are you hoping that people get from your music? Because maybe you're really telling a story more than just giving me a beat. I don't know. Well, I guess it depends on the, the piece. You know, in general, I like things that make me think, ask questions, make me curious. Um, with that particular one, I mean, you don't really need to know the backstory. It's right. got a lot of rhythm, a lot of grooves happening. You know, it's inspired by um, uh, Tony Allen, one of the founders of Afrobeat music. He was Fela Kuti's drummer forever, and Ed Blackwell, he's a, a jazz, a legendary jazz drummer. And so I kind of transcribed some of their beats, and then I um, arranged them to be kind of my own, and then... Yes. Process, process those electronically, and then what I was doing was kind of like a, a third part. And then, uh, so I was playing like a, a trio with them. But then the form, the formal wow. structure, when all the beats switch, are based like, off one of the so beats. Kind of, anyway, hopefully you just enjoy all the different rhythms happening and the different meters that are kind of happening over And, and is that the same, other, like when you but, play that, is that the same, like if you played that tomorrow night, would that be the same? Or were you, were no, you, that was actually very different from soundcheck. Really? Because so you're, you're, you're <laughs> really? that side that you're creating, Well, right? yeah, like because, it's, you know, it's... when, I, when I, my solo kit is um, uh, a little different. Every drum set you sit behind is a little different, so there's little things, um, you know, just little physical things, like if something is, is a little off or, uh. you know, it, it might require you to make a different decision or if, you know, like, for instance, my stick was hitting something in there, so I had to alter it or what I was going to do and do something else and just roll with it, but... Unbelievable. Um, typically, unless you draw attention to it, like I just did, people won't notice. So, so I learned a long time ago, just really don't apologize. No, pretend it was a good right. show, Keep even if it right wasn't, and people never know. Right. Yeah. You bang the drums all day. Right. But, <laughs> but people don't know, like, you know, you do a show, like, uh, and people say, you know, you, 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 no one knows what's supposed to happen. You, right. 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 And at the end of the day, it's more about, like, Being what in the did it feel good? Was it right. energy? It's not about, I mean, you know, especially in rock, it's not about perfection. Even in classical music, it's not, you know, Yo-Yo Ma has a quote, you know, he, he can't wait for his first mistake every night. Because then the pressure's off. He doesn't have to worry about a perfect show and he can just enjoy it and make oh, music. Uh, yes. And, you know, make music and have, try and communicate something with the people who are listening instead of, you know, holding up to some ideal that's of, a, cool, that's of, an of a perfect that's a, show. So how did, your, how did your parents do with you wanting to play drums? How did you even get started? I'm the youngest of six. They were fine with it. They didn't care. <laughs> Just go what do happened. something. Yeah. The others are all successful and professionals. And, yeah. <laughs> are they? Um, no, You're the my only dad was always, creative type? Um, well, uh, that's, that's hard to define, but I'm the only person who's playing music, yeah. Uh, okay. But, um, yeah, no, my dad always uh, played and taught on the side as a second job. I mean, he was oh. a piano teacher, and he had, you know, more students than I had at my height as his second job. So he always loved music. They always encouraged me, extremely supportive. Um, let me make a lot of noise, drove me to lessons. Um, yeah. That's great. That's great. You're really lucky. Well, what about you guys? What do you hope that people get from your work? <laughs> um, really? Yeah. After that? I'm not I know. going after so that. Awful. I know. You go. You want to go after you that? You go. No. I'm and maybe you'll tank yes. and then I'll look good after you talk. I'm a... <laughs> Jesus. God. I mean, I'm a DJ. I didn't want to work for a living, so... I basically, like, I couldn't see myself doing a nine-to-five job, and, and my mom always said, you know, as much as you like to talk, you might as well get paid for it, mm, and great. now I am, 
Although my 14-year-old son, every time he hears me talk, he's like, God, Mom, can you just be quiet? Can you, like, not pretend you're on the radio? So anyone have a 14 teenager so you can relate? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that's fun. So, no, seriously. <laughs> um, I just, I had a passion for music, but I had no talent to play it. So I would just listen to it. And I grew up listening to WLS and Larry Lujak and all the classic jocks, yeah. even Brandmeier. Yeah. And the fact that I'm working John Records in, Landecker. Oh, God, yeah. My idols, all of them. Fred Winston. So, oh, Fred Winston. Oh, my yeah. gosh, yes. The fact that I'm, like, working in radio and I've had a job this long, I don't know what I did to deserve it. I feel like it's kind of a scam and someone's going to be on at me pretty soon and it's all <laughs> going to be done. Um, but I, it's the... the Biggest blessing ever. I, we've just yeah. been so lucky and just the well, fact that we get to do this. You're third in the market, right? Well, Eric and I, our show's number one, and we keep Wait, thinking, like... I thought in the Chicago, or maybe it was all of Illinois. Anyway, help me out. No. Number one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. My staff is fired. It's been a while. So, no, we just... I mean, Eric and I have been together for 18 years now. And we just, I know, right? That's We're like an old married that's couple. That's like a marriage. Yeah, that's like a marriage, really. Seriously, my marriage didn't last that long. Do you ever go like, do you, do you like, but uh, like, do you ever like see one of your teachers? Like, you know, I'm sure like when you were in school at some point where they were like, you know what? No one's going to pay you to talk. Be quiet. Chatty Cathy. Yeah, like that. No one's going to pay you to yeah. talk. I mean, wouldn't that be great? Do you see your teacher and go like, really? I got in trouble really? all the time. Fuck you. All yeah. the time. Fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I you say know, fuck you to my you teacher. You know what I mean? Really? <laughs> I've had a couple of people on the show say that. Sometimes I wish I could, but no, that would be weird. No, I, I wouldn't say that to you. in your mind name. to go like, you know what? Because no, that's what, yeah. But people will tell you all the time you can't do that, you right. know, and you're you're gonna and you say, well, you know what? Actually, I, I can. Right. Pay attention. Watch me. Yeah. You right. suck at math. You need math right. to get by in life. No, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> really? In fact, in fact, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> So I have a tweet for Kathy, unless you want to say uh, what you hope people get from your work, Mark. No, tweet. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. From Sarah Ann 425 we hope you stay in radio forever, but if... Oh, come on now. Uh oh but, but if you could imagine another job, what would you be doing? Well, it's interesting because my Drummer. obsession with food... Right, because <laughs> I have the talent. Um, no, my obsession with food and drink, I am, my husband and I, my new husband and I, are opening a restaurant while well, he's doing all the work. I'm just sampling the food. And it's exciting. So we're really excited to open a restaurant where we're going to have music. And Tell them where it is. In Highwood. Highwood. Which Isn't is, that the uh, best? Has anybody great. heard of Highwood? Yes. Oh, Highwood's of Highwood. the best. Go to great. Highwood. It's but Highwood great is all town. restaurants. It's all oh. good restaurants. It's a great restaurant town. So nothing against the city, but we love the city and we love coming to the city, but Anybody here from the burbs, the suburbs? It's kind wow. of a pain to come to the city sometimes. So we want to bring a city experience out to the suburbs so we don't have to drive in traffic and all that. But um, if I were to come back in another life, I would want to be a maitre fromage. And that is a, a master. What now? A maitre fromage. Okay. It's a master of cheese. Ah. And I know that sounds like a joke, but like it's not for real. I love cheese. I'm obsessed with cheese. I subscribe to Cheese Ma I'm a loser, aren't I? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> just uh, actually subscribe to You're Cheese looking Magazine. You're like, Kathy, just shut <laughs> up. Oh, my God. I do. I subscribe to Cheese Magazine. I'm obsessed with cheese. What's your favorite cheese? Oh, my gosh. I would have to go with maybe a Gouda or an eight-year age Wait, there's cheddar. a Cheese Magazine? Yes, yes of course. Culture. It's awesome. It's got like six readers. <laughs> no, you, it doesn't. You... <laughs> you and your family. Right. So, blue cheese is my absolute favorite. Any it sort is? of rope for, sort of, yeah, any I'm of getting blue. there because that's still stinky. I have oh, to oh, pair that with like oh, a, yeah. a jam or <laughs> it's an that. acquired taste. Yes, yes, okay. Acquired taste. Remember, like you guys, I grew up on Velveeta, so I've come a long way. Which is I a like fine what cheese. We, we call in Wilco Grandpa Socks cheese. They smell like grandpa socks. Oh, yeah. All right. It's good cheese. I should <laughs> say that Sarah Ann 425, I don't know if Rachel is around, but she has won a very sizable box of Vos chocolate. Nice. Ooh, yeah. Very lucky. That's, I don't know if you can see. All right. Sarah Ann, if you're in the audience, this is what you have won, or we will ship it to you if you're watching Yummy. on the Sun Times Splash website, and a sippy cup from, or a tumbler cup from the mix. Well, it's, okay, it's not a sippy cup. It's like the, the Eric and Kathy to go it's cup. The Eric and Kathy. It's a go cup. Yes. It's kind of cool. God, how lame is it? That's all we brought. No, no, that's fine. You can pour your wine in it. It's good. Yes. You should have done an autographed guitar or something. <laughs> Would you sign a guitar? And then give it to Kathy for her tweet prize. So, 
moving on a little bit, but staying with the same thought, how much training goes into what you do? Because I know you've worked long and hard to get into radio. And so now, I mean, you've been doing it for a long time, so you know, you, you certainly are at the ready. But how much training goes into what you do? And for you too, Mark, or how much of this is just, oh, this is the destined job for me. You There's know no other choice. Some of my first radio jobs, I, d I was just the DJ, like spinning music during the midday show. And when I was first on the radio, I was completely freaking out. I'm like, I had my headphones on, I'm like, Holy shit, I'm on the radio. I'm talking on the radio. Oh my God. It <laughs> the was radio. overwhelming. Cool, because I've always been a radio geek. So I'm like, you sound like an idiot. You sound like you're like scripting everything. Just relax. So I put a picture of my sister. I was going to put a picture of my mom, but I thought I'll be too straight laced if I look at a picture of my mom. So I put a picture of my sister and it just relaxed me. I'm like, just pretend you're talking to your sister. Pretend you're just having fun and you're totally natural. Yes. And that helped. It helped a lot. And then I kind of got over the fact I'm on the radio. And now sometimes I forget I'm on the radio. And I think I've sworn <laughs> a couple of times. By are, are you on a delay? Like if you we swore, are. So you get bleep. And we never thought we'd use it for us. Uh -huh. But Melissa, our traffic girl, she said shit on the air. Like, just didn't even realize she said it. And Eric looked at her like, <laughs> Do you realize what you just said? He goes, you can't. He hit the button. He's like, you can't say that. She goes, what do I say? So sometimes we get so comfortable and relaxed that we just don't even realize it. And we sh over, sometimes we overshare a lot. I know <laughs> you do. It's true. What, what about you, Mark? Do you feel that this is the only job for you? <laughs> uh, it is right now. <laughs> Could you see yourself doing anything else? I, I could actually. I've been, you know, I've been, uh, I'm been doing this for 30 years. Actually, I'm an actor for 30 years. So, wow. I, but I, I think I could. I just don't know what it would be, you know. <laughs> but I have been. Um, so I, I'm not like I don't. I don't feel like it's like so like in my blood like that. But it's really, I. It, it is what I do, you know, and I, I think I'm, I'm just so used to it now, you know. Yes. Uh, Are you yeah. one of those actors that became an actor because you didn't want to be like the real you? I, it's like no, that I started as all <laughs> untalented kids do. I started as a magician. Oh. <laughs> oh. I can what, <laughs> see, I should have had you perform as a magician. No, I, but like yeah. I would like do like the Kiwanis, you know, or a rotary, you know, and I, and, and I was a kid magician. And then... Um, Got a lot of girls, didn't you? Yeah, that's really pretty hot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then I, 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 I moved into the uh, acting portion of it. But, I, 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 but it is weird. Like you do, you think like that is what you do for a live, sort of like to put on a costume and pretend to be somebody else, you know. But there is a certain, there's a comfort in it, you know, to, to pretend. But I'm not, like, I'm not like one of those guys who's like wrapped into it. Like it's hard to, you know, come in and out of it. You know what I mean? If, if that, you could be any if, character in real life. Yes. Not be you. Any I'd of the characters a, that you played? A, kick-ass drummer like that guy, man. Are you kidding? You know? So, wait, did you come straight out of high school and you were like, this is yeah, I was, it, I was give it yeah, five and I, years? And, or yeah, and you, I, or I studied like, it. No I was. I, I got in, in high school, I got sort of the bug, as they say, mm -hmm. did a play, and I thought that's what I wanted to do, and, and that is what I've been doing. So, I Lucky did you. have that. Yeah. That's to, great. To want to, to know what you want to do and then get to do it has been um, a real gift. Yeah, I feel like oh, yeah. for most artists, it's actually a blessing because most people go through life thinking, what is my real purpose? Where can I right. really be of value? And for people in the arts, usually, that's so clear to them early on. It's true. And you know, and you meet people who um, will say that they wanted to try it, you know? And, and I feel like that's, like, if I give anyone advice, like, you should try, you should try it if yeah. that's what you want to do. And, but to, not, to have not tried it, I think, is is unfortunate. Right. You it's know. funny. Lynn Bramer was on this show, and I know he's a friend of yours, and he had said the exact same thing. Everyone who says, like, oh, I've been wanting to get into radio or try this, and then he says, well, then do it. Because the only way to get any sort of sense of it is to just take that leap. So. I can't tell you how many times I've thought, like, Thank God I'm not an actor. Like, how That's difficult would it? It's hard enough, like, being a, a professional musician, like, making a living as a musician. And then I think, like, uh, if you're an actor or a painter or something, like, oh, my God. But the see, painters, so more painters much. like musicians. To me, like, painters like musician. Like, you can go. Like, the problem with actor, the main. I'm going to uh, eat. Can I eat? Yeah, go right yeah. ahead. Everyone This is going to well, be, yes, I can hold forth on this. Yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, we'll the, listen. The, the problem with act, one of the problems is that you're, you're a real interpreter. 
-hmm. So you, you kind of can't do it without, you know, people have to sort of write the play and direct the play and put you in the play. But as a, like if an artist, or he's like, I feel like you can go in the studio and play music. And I like have to kind of wait for Someone's the good men or the seven well, to say like we want you, and then you can come work on it. But without that, you're you're a third. You know, you're a it, you're you're not a creator as an actor. Is it, so much. Well, in a classical setting, you're more of an interpreter than a creator as well. That's but it's true. Still right. Incredibly difficult. You know, in those settings, to be like an orchestral musician is incredibly difficult. The, the competitions. Oh, please. It's, yeah, it's ridiculous. So as an actor, I always We're not like, keeping oh, her from this. She's just saying, like, yeah. you guys talk whatever you want. No, <laughs> as an actor, no. I've always thought, like, oh, wow. Like, at least I've got it easier than actors or, or visual artists because, wow. Well, do you hats feel off to you. then that you're always on hold for someone else? You're just waiting till someone else writes it or decides or calls you in? You know, for me now, luckily, a little bit more in my career, not as much. You know, like, I feel like there's work. I, I have work. Yes. You know, like I will work, but for a long time it was, you, you do have to wait for, it's a collaborative art, yes. much like being in a band. Or, you know, and uh -huh. I've, I've often, I have thought of like writers, and then that's a really hard life, but to actually, you, a writer just goes and does it. And I, like if you're in a band, you know, you, you need the other people. Right. You know? yeah, for a writer, there's no barrier to entry. Right, and, for, and, yeah. and, there's, and there's no excuse not to do it, which is, for me, which is great. You go like, I, they won't hire me. What can I do? I got to sleep late today. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm yes. watching cartoons. <laughs> what do you want from me? You know? Is there a trick to memorizing lines? <laughs> no, just. Uh, you're just good at it? Yeah, I actually am. That's See, impressive. isn't that funny? How I can impressive. learn lines. Everybody has their own special trait, because I, I'm amazed that you can remember any of those things. There's no particular logic to me, I guess, because I'm not around it enough. And so the same for Mark to remember all of those things, all of those That's lines. just like easy. Like for some reason, like learning lines is easy. It's just something I can just sit and do. Well, you've sort of trained your brain, I would think. By right. now, right. You could, yes. I can just, I could learn pages and pages of dialogue. Yes. You know, it's, that's easy. Wow. Well, so Kathy has the exact opposite job. So we're going to show a short little clip of what it's like behind the scenes at the mix, uh, where there are no lines at all. <laughs> Sixty seconds of the show. Just enjoying a little fruit. It's not really fruit, it's just baked pastry sugar. But delicious. Hi. <laughs> it's breakfast time. This is a real fruit, as opposed to the fruit filled with sugar and stuff. Food Nazi. <laughs> she will tell everybody how they're supposed to be. No, I'll just tell you what's wrong with the food you are eating. Because there's something wrong with everything. You know what, and there's nothing better than everybody telling you what's wrong with everything all day. <laughs> it's gotta be a lot of fun, right? It's usually unsolicited. That makes it even better. Uh -huh. Unsolicited, uh -huh. what's wrong with what you're doing. And it's only the people I love. Oh, there you go, Eric. That's not true. <laughs> yeah, they do that. So, just a short clip into your life. We do 60 seconds of the show, like behind the scenes stuff, and usually the guy that records it, social media Chris, will come in. We don't even know he's coming in. And he'll just come in and whatever we're in the mood to talk about that day, but I am a food Nazi. I'm sorry, I'll admit it. I'm guilty of it. Ever since I started eating kinda healthy again, grew up on Velveeta and Hamburger Helper. So it eventually caught up to me. So ever since I kind of became a foodie and started eating a little healthy, um, I see what Eric eats. Oh my God, every morning he has that fruit cup with all that syrup. Sugar. Yes, and then he'll have like a hostess pie. And How old is he? I just, yeah, right? <laughs> that kills his me. wife packs his lunch. How do those people get away with that? <laughs> if, oh. if I had hostess every day, I, you wouldn't put me through the door. And some people get away with it. I don't you know. know what drives me crazy about him is eating is a burden to Eric. <gasps> it's a burden. He goes, Wait, I forgot to eat last night. <gasps> to me, that's like a cardinal sin. How could you forget to eat? Like, it's an opportunity for a meal. I know. How could you forget? I, we just, I don't get it. Well, some people are very lucky that way. It just kills me. But, so you, tell, tell me a little about, about your, your health nut phrase. Well, like I said, I, my metabolism caught up with me. And I, my diet was macaroni and cheese. Yeah, the craft box. And... 
salt and vinegar potato chips. That was my diet for one summer. Mm. And um, all of a sudden my clothes didn't fit anymore and I couldn't figure out why. I'm like, God, it must be like puffy. Like it must be humid or something. <laughs> and so, cause I didn't even scale and I realized that I was just gaining weight and I gained 20 pounds that summer. And, and some I was, people it happens so fast. Yeah. And I, I had gained, like I was my heaviest and I saw dimples where I shouldn't see dimples. And so I was like, okay, I guess I have to try this healthy crap. And so I started eating vegetables because to me, corn was the only vegetable out there. And so I just started to learn how to eat healthy. Plus I had like adrenal gland issues. And so my doctor's like, you can't eat fried food anymore. You have to just watch your diet. And so I started to learn how to eat healthy. You can change your taste buds. If I can go from Hamburger Helper and Velveeta. Hamburger Helper. Seriously, oh like gosh. I grew up on it. Um, if you can go from all that and you can, you can change your taste buds. Well, I think I also read that when you were sort of changing your routine for food, you started meditating. And I'm wondering if either of you meditate to get sort of in your work groove. <laughs> and I wonder if Kathy still meditates. Yeah. If I can meditate, I'm not kidding. Any one of you can meditate. Does anyone here meditate? Who meditate? So a, a decent number. Well, maybe not. 20. 20 people in the audience. Was it, say. Was it hard at first? It's impossible to quiet yeah, your mind. To so get your mind to settle down. But you just learn to listen to your breathing. And like I said, if I can do it, anybody can do it. But there's a way to do it. Guided meditation will help. But it totally, as you can tell, I'm a little hyper. And it totally like calms me down temporarily. Does it work for you? If I did, I used to do it for 28 minutes in the morning and 28 minutes at night. What? I don't know, Deepak Chopra told me to do 28 minutes, so I listened to him. And but that for you, was, that means 28 minutes at 3.30 in the morning. I was That's waking right. up at, yeah, 3 o'clock. Oh my gosh. But I'm telling you, I was never more calm. I need to do it, you think I need to do that again? I should probably do that again, go, shouldn't I? Go right now, I'm gonna <laughs> She'll be back in 28 no, minutes. I highly, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. And you too, any meditating? No, there's not a chance of it. Well, here. I don't meditate, for, like, uh, not formally, but I mean, I would, like, before a show, I would get, like, calm. Uh huh. What do you, you know? do? Yeah, how do you do that? Like, just sit and listen to music or do a crossword puzzle. I would just be oh. quiet, you know, like, yes. not have. Okay. Like, I like to get to the theater, uh, and we, we have to be at the theater a half hour before is like the union rule. You have to be there at half hour, but I like to get there an hour before and just get in the dressing room and just, you know, kind of leave the rest of the world behind. But I, there's nothing formal about like, yes. it's just about being, you know, get, getting, getting in your in own that space. space. Yes. Yeah. Within just, zone. yeah. For, you know, and putting on the costume and just kind of right. going, okay, you know, this is, yes. you know, this is who I'm going to be for right now. Right. And it feels like you, it, it does a, a slight transformation. You know, you, you put on the new clothes and you do your hair the way you're supposed to and you put on the right shoes and you're, you just kind of get in the zone a little bit. And how much do you feel that you truly become that character when you start to put on the clothes and wig? I don't, you, I don't know. I mean, not, not, not like in a, some... Daniel Day Lewis, you know where they said like he's like he was like Lincoln for like eight right. months, and it was yeah. like oh shit, you know I feel like oh fuck you, you know what I mean? Like really? So I, you know, but I, I you, you just get, how I, I can't. It's hard to explain. You just sort of get comfortable like this. You, you I, I guess I don't play. I don't. The things I get cast in are not that far from me, and like in yes. a way, like they're like a. Right. You know, so I feel like I can go from here to there. Yes, pretty you know? easily. And, yeah, and, it, and it's like, oh, I, I'm definitely in the place to play that part, but I would feel really weird to not go on stage, like to be able to not have your costume that night or something. You know yes. what I mean? Like all those, all those things help make you create that sure. person in that world that you're going to be. If well, that makes sense. I, I went behind the scenes at the Chicago Shakespeare Theater, and uh, do you know Melissa Veil? Mm -hmm. So she made me over into like wow, Shakespearean really? yeah. times. Uh, she's an amazing wig I mean, master. She's, she's, a, she's won a, many awards. Yeah. And she's an incredible wig master. She's an I'm, artisan. She, she was. She really came from the Stratford uh, Shakespeare Festival. Right, and she makes the so wigs wig, She's a wig. She makes and, wigs. She's a wig so maker. She did me over with wig and makeup and the clothes for you know sort of the 1600s, and I felt transformed. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot of fun. 
Yeah, it was cool. great to what work. Yeah, experience. it was cool to go behind Shakespeare. Just, just yeah. to do, you like went there to just get a <laughs> It was a random up. Saturday. <laughs> I was no, say I was interviewing Melissa. <laughs> oh, okay. So I was filming her and interviewing right. her, and I was sure I was you were. Yeah, interviewing. Right. <laughs> I just want to be <laughs> Marie Antoinette. <laughs> I sort of did. Yeah. I was interviewing her though to take me from like sweatpants to Marie Antoinette and how that process goes yeah. of everything she does, and so it was really fun. Well, it's amazing. Like a theater like Chicago Shakespeare is amazing because they have like they they literally keep artisans in. You know, there's like cobblers. You know, so people who keep these. So like, it's funny you think like, well, you don't really need that, but they do that, and it's it's pretty great. You know, so there's like they're making shoes and making, you know, um, what are those doublets and you know, it, it's it's kind of cool that, that that you that. And I've done a few shows over there, and that's not I'm not a classical actor at all, but to get into those. Um, wardrobes is it's it is that's very transforming, you know. To, and then to sort of realize you're saying Shakespeare's words, which are uh, what four almost five hundred years. I mean, four hundred. You know, really, yeah. I mean, that's kind of an amazing experience. Yes, yes, and just even being behind the scenes there with all the props, and yeah. it was a great experience for me. Uh, so we're gonna have a real short great experience with our sponsors, and we're gonna be right back in about ninety seconds because I have a tweet for Mark. All right. So we're ready. <laughs> it's your turn. I it know. is your turn. <laughs> Voss Artesian Water from Norway. Splendidly still or luxuriously sparkling. Voss Artesian Water from Norway. Want to learn from Chicago's number one culinary arts school? Kendall College now offers a certificate training program and individual cooking classes. Go to taste.kendall.edu for more information. drummer, of course, among other an, things, like composer and percussionist. Oh, wow. You're Glenn an of course. <laughs> wow. Of course. You've made it. <laughs> you're so and of right course now. you've made it. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> so you just go, and of course. Yeah. And then everyone knows who you are. You see, she had to say my name. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so usually I start my show, if anyone's been here before, I start my show and I say, oh, you all have something in common, which is why I brought you here. And I didn't start the show that way this time because I couldn't find really? one damn thing in common between the three of you. So at first, okay, then you're, you're a drinker, but yeah, so it, you know, when once Glenn agreed to be on the show, Glenn's name came up everywhere. Rick Bayless was interviewing him, and I was at the James Beard Awards, sitting next to Nick Kokonis, and he was talking about how much you go to Next and Alinea, and your name just kept popping up. Aaron Packer's Gallery, Kathy, of course, is everywhere. I see her everywhere. We keep running into each other at different meetings and networking things. Mark. <laughs> and on Broadway, won two okay. Jeff Awards. As I said, he's Sex in the City with Sarah Jessica Parker. He has no Wikipedia page. He's not on Facebook. Yeah, that's he's so not on Twitter. That, I looked you up. I couldn't find anything about you, basically. Come but, on, I mean, Google. You could Google I me. I did Google you. I did Google you. It doesn't say anything. So, <laughs> you are <laughs> seeing him. Oh, my God. <laughs> You have a high-powered attorney and retainer to get rid of all that stuff, don't you? Yeah. Publicist my IMDb. Publicist in trouble. It says, it says nothing. It says that you've been My involved. IMDb. It's, what's it? Uh, the internet IMDb? movie? Yes. No, IMDb. Look yes. it up right now. I, no. Put that on the screen. <laughs> I got <laughs> fucking credits up and down. Oh, yes. No, no, no. Oh, no. I looked it you up. You misunderstand me. Everything has all your credits. But I couldn't find anything about you, the person, or you. So uh, my, here's I'm a mystery. So these two pictures Perfect. are so public, and you are so private. So the thing you have in common is that you are the polar opposite of them. And I was wondering, how do you keep your life so private? OK, first of all, <laughs> let's, well, let's start the humiliation now. I have not won two Jeff Awards. I have lost to Jeff Awards. No, you have <laughs> no, I, no, I yes. am nominated yes. twice. And I've actually nominated three times and have won none of them. Okay. <laughs> it's all about being nominated. Exactly. It's just an honor to be nominated, right? 
<laughs> That's also wrong men on your side. Right. Okay. And, uh, but I'm private. What do, you, what do you mean? Well, so, for example, you know, particularly now with Twitter and Facebook and everyone's taking pictures of everything they eat, let alone the people that they're with, you see more of people's public lives out and about. And so if you might Google them, of course you'll get what they do professionally, but you'll get other stuff about... Like the private stuff. So you'll get... I guess I, I you know what, I just, I, I was, I just, I thought I had a, a, a reaction to Facebook, which felt... Well, you uh, broke out in hives? No, I just didn't, I... People would say, like, are you friends with Kathy? And they go, well, we're Facebook friends. I go, well, then you're not friends. You know, like, I, it just wasn't my, I don't know, it wasn't my thing, you know? I get that. So, you know I what? I just realized I think we have something in common. Uh, okay, this is going to be lame. Sorry. No, go, go so, for okay. it. We are all have okay? a six-year-old. Yes. Okay. Well, okay. in a month. Okay. That's close enough. Uh, that, that works. So Let's all talk control. about our six-year-olds. All right. Yeah. Okay. We won't talk about our kids, yeah. I swear to God. That, that'll <laughs> kill the show. Right. Thanks for that. <laughs> Backstage, we were showing pictures of our kids. Thank God we didn't subject you guys to that, but I think we all have six-year-olds. I do have a quote from Mark, and this great person is going to win two tickets to the Goodman Theater. Ask Aunt Susan, which starts March 24th? Uh, May. Mar sorry, May 24th, of course. Right. May 24th. Um, it's a major plus. At It's a major plus question for you is, have you found acting has served different purposes at different times in your life? Yes. I think, sure. It's been, uh, it's been a... Such as? Well, so it's been a creative outlet. It's been a, a, a job at times. It's been, you know how I identify myself. I mean, it, it is what I do. So sure. yeah, the answer is yes. Have you successfully lived all of acting for 30 years? I'm sorry? I mean, has acting been your primary no. source? No. I, I was, okay. uh, I, in, I, had date until uh, nine, so but for 20 years, for the first 10 years, I was, I did a lot of different jobs. I was, sure. um, magician. Yeah. yeah, I was a magician. <laughs> I was a, a bell, I was a bellhop. Oh, I would have nice. liked to have seen you as a bellhop. Let me tell you, let Maybe me tell you a bellhop story. I was a bellhop at the Ambassador East Hotel oh, back when it was the oh, hotel. Wow. And I uh, delivered something to a room and Frank Sinatra answered the door oh, shut up. and said, uh, I gave him what he wanted. He said, I don't have any money, but what? this was in my tuxedo last night. Would you like it? And Frank Sinatra gave me this pocket square no. that says, that one? love nice. Frank Sinatra. Whoa. Fantastic. So. Are you making that up? No. How that would I make that up? Because you're an actor. I just thought someone would mention my pocket square and then it would be more organic well, no, than I, I now I can't. I, I had to set my own self up. I had to set up my own story. I thought someone at some point would go, hey, look at you, you got an orange well, pocket square. And I go, well, that's a funny story. You gotta put Frank out there. It says Frank. On, all I see is like a leaf or oh, something. Oh, and it has his face. It's actually, Love Frank Sinatra. It's his see, face in print. I don't know if you can get that on the camera. Well, it's his face I don't know where impressive. It is. I don't know where to, which wow. camera yes. Well, there are you look at that one. I've never face seen yeah. a merch okay. item on pocket squares. Of How so. many times did he do that? Say, I don't have right. any money. Right. Right. I know, but, right, exactly. But you know but what? My... Frank Sinatra gave this and just keep printing them up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so I had regular jobs until uh, uh, in 94. And then uh, I made the uh, switch. Wow. And it's been, and it was, it was, it's been, listen, I'm, I'm very. Um, 20 uh, years. Yeah, I'm very. Yeah. I, I think it's, uh, I've been very lucky with that. Is that how you met your wife in acting? Or did you meet her as when you were a magician? <laughs> you're just obsessed with the magician. <laughs> the magician thing will not go away. Hey, right. no, if you're good, that is impressive. I'm serious, if you're good, to that's do magic? impressive. To do no, ma I know oh. someone that does magic. and it's I actually started to get, uh, now that we back to the six-year-olds, but now my, my daughter, I did some tricks with her and she loves it. And, and then she'll do a trick and she'll say, that she is like the worst magician. My kid is like, she'll just go, but I mean, she'll go like, look, watch this. Look, and I'm like, that's not a trick. Oh, <laughs> so, Daddy. I'm gonna, so, uh, we'll teach her one. I'm gonna, start yes. I'm gonna get her, I'm gonna get her a magic set. Yes. Okay, moving on. So how'd you meet your wife, before magic or after? Um, after magic. Um? After magic. Okay, good, good. Okay. How exactly? <laughs> you better remember. XRT, the regular guy. Oh, I know. Yeah. Okay, that's my... That was, that's my wife's ex-husband, who was my good friend, who we all, we, I met, I met my wife through my 
ex-best friend. What do you want from me? <laughs> we were at a Bears game, and, and, I, and, I, said, and, and I said to Marty, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm dating Bridget. And he said, that's okay with me. And that was, so well, that's okay. it. Wow. If that's really but okay the, with yes, him. Yes, we're all, we're, all, we're all in the family. Yes, I've met him before. I did a poetry event with okay, him. Really so nice guy. We're all friends. Yes, yes. really we're nice all, guy. We're all friends. Well, uh, maybe, on. maybe this is time. I don't know if you still have a story in you, but if you feel like doing a little performing, sir, this would be a time if you wanted to. Like, do you remember any lines from any of your... I'll tell a story. Parts? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I was said that, that, that my, the, my life as an actor has been one long descent into humiliation. <laughs> and I got a... And I'll tell you the story that I got a job on Broadway, and I was an understudy on Broadway, and I was Matthew Broderick's understudy in The Odd Couple. And when you're an understudy, it's really the hardest job in the theater. So this is a two-part, two should I tell the whole story? It's a two-part story. So the mm -hmm. first part of the story is that I, um, when, when you're an understudy, it, it really is the hardest job in the theater, and what you have to do as an understudy is you have to recreate the role that the actor, the, the, the main actor plays, really to the, to the gesture, you know? And it's, because your job is to fill in and have the other actors be comfortable. So after about seven months on Broadway, Matthew Broderick took a vacation. So I went on for Matthew Broderick with Nathan Lane in The Odd Couple. Now, the first thing you have to know is that when you go on for a star, everybody hates your guts. <laughs> because they have come to the theater and they have paid hundreds and hundreds of dollars to come to the theater. And they've come to see Matthew Broderick and Nathan Lane and The Odd Couple. And when they get there, they find out it's Nathan Lane and Mark Grapey. <laughs> so the first thing that happens is that they, they, they make an announcement and they say, you know, in uh, tonight's role, the role of Felix will not be played by Matthew Rudd, will be played by Mark Grapey. And then 2,000 people boo. Oh, no. <laughs> they just literally boo. They go, oh. Awesome. Right? <laughs> and then the... The other thing about The Odd Couple is The Odd Couple is this really amazing Neil Simon play that was written in the 60s for... Uh, Walter Matthau and Art Carney, who were really big stars. So it was written for stars, and stars in plays get entrance applause, right? A star comes on in a play, and everybody claps. Yeah. But since everybody claps, it stops the action of the play. So they have to write in a time for people to clap that doesn't disturb the action. So in The Odd Couple, Felix, the role I was playing, he comes on in the rain, and the action, so he comes on, it's Matthew Broderick, he comes on, and everyone claps for 45 seconds, because it's Matthew Broderick, yay, it's Matthew Broderick. And so for the 45 seconds, he takes off his raincoat, and he hangs it up slowly, and he takes off his hat, and he hangs up his hat, and he takes out his handkerchief, and he wipes off the water, and then the, finally the applause is done, and they can start the play. Well. I have to do everything this guy does, but no one cares about me. So, in, in the play, every time, you know, every other night, the door opens and they're like, Felix, and the audience goes, ah, they start screaming, and then for 45 seconds, he does all this. So I come on the first night, and I'm like, Felix, you never heard such silence. But for 45 seconds, I gotta act like they're clapping. So I gotta take off my hat and say, this is the longest 45 seconds of my life. But the, the story that, uh, that I came to tell was that it, it, when you're doing this show with these stars, the people come all the time backstage to see them in New York. There's celebrities. all And, there's, and in, in a Broadway theater, there's a doorman who's got a microphone, and it's got like two stages where he sort of says who's there, and then there's a one that's kind of inside the theater that tells you who is there, right? So... And we were always there every night, and we were sitting there. And every, you know, once at the end of the show, the microphone would come on, and they'd say, like, Nathan Lane, you have a visitor? It's a Lane Stritch. And, you know, and then they were like, Matthew Broderick, you have a visitor? It's Lauren Bacall. And they were like, 
Nathan Lane, you have a visitor. It's Billy Crystal. And then one night, we're sitting in the green room, and for no good God reason, the microphone comes on and says, Mark Grapey, you have a visitor. And everyone looks at me like, who's coming to see you? <laughs> Next thing out of the microphones, it's your mother's periodontist. <laughs> who would come to the show, say, saw my name in the program, and said, oh, I gotta go say hello. That's awesome. At least you didn't get some in that. Yeah. Now you get your applause. There you go. 45 seconds of clapping starts yeah. now. Come on. Right, take off my hat. Not to include the chef. Let's see what he's been making in the kitchen for our entree, and then we're going to bring him out. Mm. Now we're going to be making our brioche crusted halibut on crew over grilled asparagus, asparagus puree, and a shaved white asparagus salad. And we're just going to be finishing that with a little bit of a bacon cream sauce. So our halibut dish, we have uh, Alaskan halibut from Sitka, Alaska. So we've basically taken brioche, fro we freeze it and then slice it very thin on the meat slicer. And this is our end product. We then cut the brioche to the size of our portion halibut. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take just a little bit of uh, melted butter, brush it on the halibut, touch of sea salt, and then that brioche goes right down on top of that butter. That butter is kind of uh, an adhesive for the brioche. So we'll start in the pan, get the oil nice and hot, and we have our halibut with our brioche crust on it, and we're going to put that straight down, bread side down, and we're just going to let that simmer for about a minute. And I always just shake it a little bit just to make sure that bread's not sticking to the pan. Once I can see that the bread's starting to crisp up a little bit on the outside, we're going to take it, and we're not going to flip it, and we're going to throw it. right into the oven. So while that's cooking, we have some bacon that's been uh, rendered down. This is for the bacon sauce that we're gonna do. We're gonna strain off most of the fat, we're keeping some of the fat. We're gonna hit it with just a little bit of shaved onion. We're gonna saute those until they begin to caramelize. Then we're gonna deglaze with a touch of sherry vinegar. And we're gonna drop that vinegar down until it's almost dry in the pan. We will then finish it with a touch of cream and let that cream simmer until it's reduced by half until we get a nice uh, consistent sauce consistency on there. We're gonna check our fish, flip it, and we have a perfectly crusted piece of halibut. Nice brown, golden brown. We don't want black or anything. So that's finishing in the oven. We'll continue to plate. So we put our asparagus puree down the plate. Basically what we've done is taken onions, garlic, added cream, and asparagus stems. Puree all of that together, add in fresh blanched asparagus to get it that bright green color again. Then I'm gonna take our asparagus, again, which has been grilled, which is gonna add a lot of depth to this dish, a nice kind of grilled flavor. Grilling always reminds me of spring. Uh, because that's when people, the weather gets nice and everyone starts to bust out the grills. So we got our green and white asparagus. We're then gonna take some raw asparagus. This is uh, shaved white asparagus. We're just gonna hit it with a little bit of fresh cracked pepper, a little bit of salt, chopped parsley, and minced chives. And it's gonna be dressed in a little bit of curry oil and a little bit of uh, lemon vinaigrette, which is just fresh lemon juice, a little bit of olive oil, and salt. So that's kind of our salad component here. You're looking for a lot of nice fresh lemon juice in this. Our halibut is now done, crusted. Again, we flipped it, let it crust, and just flipped it once. And we're just gonna finish this with a little bit more of that raw asparagus, it gives it really nice fresh taste and kind of reinforces the all the asparagus on the plate. And at this point we just finished with some of that bacon cream that's been reducing. 
And then what I have here is just a little bit of shaved carrot radish turnip and just a little bit of scallion. And that's kind of our garnish. And here we have our brioche crusted halibut on crew over asparagus puree, grilled asparagus, white asparagus salad, and a touch of bacon cream. Thank you for joining us here tonight at the dinner party. And please stop by 24 South Michigan at the Gage Restaurant for good people, great drinks, and great food. Come on out, chef. Come on out, belly up to the table. Join us. We have a chair right there for you. You're gonna come sit right in between. Yay. So good and so light. Excellent. Wasn't yeah, that just so, so light and so lovely good. for spring? Thank Very you for refreshing. cooking for us. It's great, thank you. I have a question for you. You know, the, the volume that you do at the Gage yes. is it's almost like a bar. I mean, it's a pub. It's meant to be a gastro yeah. pub. Gastro pub. But you're getting so many, you're in a very touristy do, yeah. uh, location. So you're basically Michigan Avenue in Madison, is it? Or yeah. one Madison. about yeah. Madison? Yeah. So, you know, you're lots of tourists, particularly in the summer. Nice, nice save. Nice save. Particularly awesome. in the summer. Um, but, you know, you're really trying to keep that quality and standard for cooking up there. And I'm wondering how those two gel together. Uh, it's, it's definitely hard. Uh, we're doing... 500 covers, lunch and dinner, especially Gosh. in the summer, it's ridiculous. Each Not, lunch and dinner is 500? Oh yeah, 500. Wow. And that, does, does that include people who are at the bar? Because your bar is Not so Not including busy. the bar. Wow. You don't include the bar. Oh, this is um, walk in the park for you. Yeah, this yeah. is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I think we've found a good mesh of uh, people that like food, love food in the city, like kind of foodies, I guess. And uh, that touristy attraction that we get for uh, being right across from Millennium Park you know, we still have, you know, fish and chips, scotch egg, burgers. We have, you have great a burger burger. There? Great burger. What's the secret to a great burger? Fat content. Oh. The grind. The grind of meat. Bring you grind it, you, you grind it? We do there. grind it in-house. Yeah, we do. Uh, my favorite is the venison burger. So we take uh, venison meat, we grind it in-house with pork fat, a uh, little bit of venison fat, and it's all about the ratio of meat to fat. So. Pork fat rules. <laughs> Every, yeah, who doesn't like fat? Well, it's funny, because Glenn and I were talking about this behind, you know, in the green room. What, what does foodie mean to you? Because I think that that definition has changed so much as everyone sort of elevated their taste buds. Um, I don't know what foodie means to me. I think Anymore. it means yeah. uh, you love to enjoy going out to eat food and good food at that. And you like to experience new things, uh, not your just hamburger and french fries, but like to try something new. So do you Not have to be a judge if you're, because foodie now sort of connotates that you know something, right? That you're, <laughs> right or? Uh, <laughs> I would say so, but I, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> okay, all right. I don't know. Maybe what do they you, do, I don't know. What do you guys think when you think foodie? Like, do you think you guys are foodies? I'm not a foodie. You know, no, I mean, I like to think I'm a foodie, but when I told my friend who is a true foodie, and she's, she writes, um, she's a blog writer, um, food critic, and when I told her I don't like Brussels sprouts, she's like, oh, done, you're not a foodie. A tr oh, and I told her I don't like sushi, she's like, you are not a foodie. I'm like, yeah, but I like food. Yeah. But, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Why can't you be a foodie and not like sushi? You can still have your own personal that, taste. That was my argument. Yeah, it's not, no offense, I'm not a big asparagus fan. I liked the asparagus puree. That was great. Was super I, good. Good. I thought it was super good. And they both tried to get me to eat my asparagus, but I'm learning how to eat vegetables and I'm learning. But I think that if you just have an appreciation for a good meal, how many of you guys have either gone to a restaurant or cook dinner for yourself at home and it was just sucky and you feel ripped off. You're yes. Like, oh, uh -huh. that was a meal that got wasted. Darn it, and you can't wait till the next meal. That to me is a definition of a foodie. Somebody who mm. has a standard of quality that they're expecting from every meal. Oh, no, 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 nothing about quality, but you just have to enjoy the meal. <laughs> you enjoy if you don't it. like your you dinner, you're a foodie. You have to enjoy it. <laughs> you have to enjoy it. And if you, if you didn't enjoy it for whatever reason, and you are looking forward to the next meal, I think that classifies a foodie. Well, it's funny, because I used to think of myself as a foodie, and I no longer do, because I realized that the definition has changed, and it now means someone who, like, knows what they're doing to some extent, or has that in the know, and I'm, I've sort of stayed at, I love to cook, I love to be around food, I love the colors, I love the smells, I love to touch it, I love to be with it. I, we were talking about the creative process of cooking, 
before. Yeah, that's what I get off on. Uh. Yeah, because you're doing a lot of making music around food, which I think is really interesting. Or, or well, no, I mean I know a lot of I know a lot of chefs and, and great cooks, and and I get off on the creativity. I mean I enjoy, of course, having a great meal, but I'm not. I don't think I have enough knowledge to know like, oh, this should be more this way, or, or the process that goes behind it. I just enjoy. Um, the sensations, of course, but also yes. the creativity and the experience aspect of it. That's how I can relate it to what I do, and yes. that's that's why I've yeah. So do I you like come up sometimes with recipes like in the middle of the night or like all the time? All the time. All the time. Do you have a little notepad by your bed? Uh, I have a whiteboard in my kitchen that <laughs> yes. is just covered so with great. random notes, and sometimes I'll understand them. I'll come back, write something down at two in the morning, and then I'll come back a month later and I'll have no idea what I was thinking about. Um, so Funny. it's just a glob of a mess of stuff, but it's all ideas, random things that pop into my head and I'll jot them down. Did you sure. learn to cook That's from my your exact parents process. or um, self-taught? No, sort of, sort of self-taught. Uh, I, you know, like I said, my, my parents didn't cook a lot. Um, we grew up in a boarding school, so I was eating canned asparagus and no, I didn't like fish when I first got into cooking. I didn't like a lot of things. Cause I, like I said, I grew up eating cafeteria food, so very limited, you know, canned beets at the salad bar, that stuff. Uh, so it, it definitely took some, uh, you know, insight from other people to really learn about flavors. And I think that's, I got lucky learning from really great chefs, very knowledgeable, very hardworking, taught me the ethics of hard work and what it takes to be in a kitchen, cook in a kitchen, really to appreciate food. What, what it is. What don't you like anymore? Or still? You just still cannot find a taste for it. Bluefish. Really? I, it's where, something about the oiliness of the fish. Mm. Where do you go for Korean food in the city? Yes, where do you oh, go for man. Korean food? Uh, I, I don't go a lot of places Thank in the you. city, I'll tell you, but uh, it's been a while. So I couldn't tell you the best, the best place. Um, off the you top of my head, nights off, I actually I just got back right from uh, Hawaii, and I went to this um, out of... Everywhere in Hawaii, went to this Korean barbecue place, and it was the best meal I ate all day. It was wow. 10, 10 bucks for a big paper plate of food. And nice. It's probably one of the better things I've had in the city, too. So, so I, you probably get this question all the time, but do you cook at home? Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Where do you go? Like, if, so that would be, I, love, I love grilling. Like, what, what's the food like that we'd be surprised that, like, you actually, like... At home? Just wherever. Like, like what do you, like, go get, like a... Like a Hostess pie or something like what's like what's the uh, what's like the secret <laughs> food that's like really food? you know like yeah. what's like what's your you know like um, that's really good. I, I really love bang bang pie. Speaking of pies, wait wait uh, what do you love? Bang bang pie. It's a little pie shop. Bang bang bang. Uh, they do company. some really interesting homemade pies and, and I love going there. My sweet buddy and there. savory or do you just sweet like, and savory. Yes, you like them both. Oh, yeah. Yes, you guys. Do you have a favorite junk food? Oh. That's like asking if I have a favorite yeah. kid. Yeah. <laughs> you like all junk food? Yeah. I mean, no, I, I still like junk food. Pizza. Is pizza yeah, junk pizza. food? Yeah, You know what? I think pizza's healthy. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. it can be. It depends. Depends how it's done. But do yeah. you have favorite? Uh, it, you know what? I don't do it too often, but I'll, anyone who says Popeye's fried chicken isn't good is crazy. That's the best. <laughs> that's some great yeah. food. Yeah. That's funny. Oh. Somebody told me that the chicken hut on Belmont and Broadway. Oh yeah, the chicken is hut. It's great for chicken. I don't know if that's true. Um, uh, it's Add it like to the light chicken? No, it's that's a, like a rotisserie. Oh. Yeah. What about you? Any favorite junk food? Well, I was going to say pizza. But, yeah, uh, I don't think a pizza's junk pizza. food. No. Yes. Um, Not if it's done properly. I mean, again, I mean, there's plenty. tombstone yeah. pizza. That's what oh, we used man, to eat. Yeah. Oh. Is that disgusting? Oh. Like, no, how, it's it's how good if it tastes good. Changed? No, it doesn't. Tombstone's Gross. But if but if you like it, it's you know. I that, didn't like it. Uh, okay. It was well, when my mom was too. Oh, oh my I, god! If my mom I, was I, watching, I'm I, sorry. That's you're the Wisconsin. one who brought it up. Your I think mother you mother like is tombstone. watching. <laughs> I know, but no, she was a working mom, so she didn't have a lot of time no. to cook. How many of you guys grew up on food where your mom sure. didn't have time to cook, sure. and and that's why we enjoy food so much now. Okay. Well, now that you're healthy, do you have a favorite health food snack that you could tell everyone that was, they might work into their routine? Eric teases me all the time because I love kale chips. He said, no, it's impossible. Nobody can love kale chips. I'm that, with him. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's kale, but if you make it salt, Chef Pete, you know. Oh, I love kale. That, I mean, there's so many things you can do with kale, and it's, if you have like that salty pit, you like the salt, um, it's so easy, and it's healthy, and I, is, is that bad? I don't know. It's healthy. Good. 
Um, Can you think of one? Yeah, no, yeah, I eat healthy <laughs> yogurt and fruit and yogurt. You know, yeah, I like yogurt. That's not a snack. That's, That's not, not a snack. snack. Uh, what snack? That's... A healthy avocado? Is that a snack? I don't know. Okay, so my <laughs> my favorite my favorite healthy snack, I like the snack is I take avocado. I hope this doesn't gross people out. Uh, I take avocado. I take an overripe mango and I put them in the blender together. Okay. Okay. So I, <laughs> I drink it. I drink it. Yes. I have a question wow. for Chef. Uh, hey, Julie Smolianki. Smolianski. Smolianski. CEO of Lifeway Foods. She's <laughs> right over there. And here she is, Keeper. wherever she is, right over there. Uh, she wants to ask the chef, what is the best meal you've ever had? Oh, and by the way, you won dinner for two at the oh. gate. Oh, Yay. yeah. Nice right. for you. Good question. Uh, man, I hope you use uh, kefir in your dish that that's, night. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. Uh, you know, one of, the, one of the best overall meals that I've ever had uh, was at the Addison in Del Mar, San Diego, at the resort. Uh, five Star, Five Diamond restaurant and resort. Uh, from top to bottom, it was incredible. From the service to uh, the flavors of the food. Uh, you know, I got there. It was the first time I actually saw this. I, was, I came in. It was me and my uh, girlfriend. We sat down. They brought over this little, like, looked like a little footstool. It was all velvet. It looked beautiful. And they sat down right in between us at the table. And I, had, I was about to put my feet up on it. And <laughs> it wasn't sure. And it, it was for her purse. So oh, it wouldn't wow. touch the ground. So, it, I mean, it was, it was, luck, it was luxury. Um, Better than a purse hook. It, it was a great <laughs> overall meal. A different meal. kind of purse hook. Yeah. Wow. So. What about you guys? Any meal that stays in your mind? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've, I've had a, a bunch, but I have to say one particular, since we're in Chicago. Yes. Uh, I had a tasting menu once, um, Lula Cafe. I love going, we said yes. earlier, love going to Lula Cafe. You can go and get out of there for, for 20 bucks if you want, or you can go all the way up. Uh, I, I took uh, um, John Luther Adams. I uh, just won the Pulitzer for music, a great composer. He was in town, we were working on something. Took him there and um, uh, had the tasting menu. Jason uh, Hamill pre yes. prepared this vegetarian tasting uh. meal of everything that was just completely fresh. It was one of the most world-class meals I've ever had in my life. It was incredible. And I've, I've eaten at some good places, but and a lot of them are extremely memorable. Grant, of course, always has yes. an amazing experience. Yes. Uh, the Linear Next, or uh, there's so many. There's CPA, oh God, so there's many. a lot. But, but that meal always stood out, because I, I didn't see it coming. Ah, because yeah. you didn't Those expect are the best. it. I Those well, I knew are I the always best. enjoy Every time I've been there, it's been great, but I, yes. that one was just like, yeah, it was just like a left hook just out of nowhere. I think that's something that to me is almost a little disappointing, that chefs are sort of the new rock stars, although no one will replace you, Glenn, but they're sort of taking all of the, the you know, this fanfare that arrives around food and everyone snaps pictures of their food and there's just this overdoing of food. So your expectations are so high that some of the best meals are, you know, things you whip together at home or things you're not expecting. And then you're getting what I think food was meant to do, which is really bring you that loving feeling. I mean, there's so much more to food than just your taste buds, the color and the textile that we talked about, but also I think that nurturing feeling that food can give you. And to bring people together. And to That's bring people together. One of the things that we want to do with our restaurant is just bring people, uh, just a really diverse group of people together that love food. Yes. Because you have something to talk about. No matter what your background is, yes. everybody that loves food has a passion for it and can talk about it all yes. night. Yes, yes. Uh, which we're gonna do. We're gonna continue to talk about things all night. So I hope that you stay with us. One word from each of you. Last question before we go on our way out. Big summer plans, what are they starting with you? Anything? Yeah, we have a theater festival in uh, yes. Three Oaks, Michigan. Right. Uh, and you are yeah. co a co-founder of A co-founder. We're at the, uh, in, uh, in three, beautiful Three Oaks, Michigan, about 75 miles east of here. We'll be bringing some of the best to Chicago at the uh, Acorn Theater and some other venues in uh, in uh, Michigan. And, Wonderful. And we'll be there and uh, Wonderful. In, enjoying ourselves. And uh, uh, you didn't ask me about my best meal, but I will go ahead and tell you. <laughs> tell exit, exit 12, Sawyer, Michigan. There's a Popeye's chicken. It's unbelievable. <laughs> exit 12, we'll remember. Exit 12, everybody. Okay. We'll remember. My summer, um, how, 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 how? No, they, no, 
we'll keep talking because this really is not no, that I exciting. About your summer. <laughs> no, we just my family always goes to the Jersey Shore, and I know oh. that Dan Snooky. She like I used it for to, you. She did before <laughs> they came along. You know, I'd say I go to the Jersey Shore, and they're like, "Oh, that's not." Well, no, that's not true because they would ask me if like hypodermic needles washed up on the shore. Oh. And, <laughs> so no, only but it when is, you were there. It's great. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's it, the Jersey Shore, believe it or not, can be great. And I haven't been there since Hurricane Sandy, so I want to go back this summer, see what it's all about, support the economy, and it really is a great... Now that Hurricane came through, I'm sure all the needles are gone, yeah, so right. it's a great place to go. Okay, so we've got uh, Three Oaks, Three Michigan, and we've got the Jersey Shore. Are you for the yeah. summer? For the summer. I mean, I, I, I'm here the rest of the summer. I just got back from Hawaii, but... Uh, I think uh, I'm definitely excited. We're doing a, a Lagunitas beer dinner uh, coming up oh, in a couple and months. Great. Yeah. And yes. that's my, by far my favorite beer. I'm a beer yes. person. I love and they beer. just opened a fantastic brewery here. And they're here. coming here, yeah. so we're yes. uh, kind of teaming up with those guys. And that's we're going to build probably like a six-course dinner all around all different kinds of their Lagunitas beer, which we're, I think will be very fun time and yeah. exciting. Great. So if yeah. everybody fills out their sheets on their table with their email address, then I can let you know about Absolutely. the Lagunitas uh, <laughs> six-course tasting at the gate. Is that little something? Great. Little something. Little, little something. something. Yes. I had something. you last night. It's a little something. Fine, sir, for the summer. Um, well, I have some exciting shows. Prospect Park in Brooklyn and... Um, got uh, uh, Mass Mocha, the Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art. I'm oh, there at the great. end of July as well, doing a little residency uh, and performances with Steve Reich and Michael Gordon and David Lang, uh, Julia Wolf. It'll be really cool. But I have to say, um, I'm going on a month-long camping trip with my wife and kids because oh, this is the right. first summer in Whoa. 13 years I haven't been on that. tour. And I, get, I have to say, that's like... I'm pretty amped about that. No, wait, are but, you uh, going camping or are you going glamping? No, camping. <laughs> camping? Yep. Tent. A tent? Does that count? That does. That does. Where yeah. are you going? Um, All over? Out west and back. Nice. A lot of national parks. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah. Montana, can I ask, one, can I ask you one more question? Yes, Before go right you, ahead. I did, yeah. Actually, because I was thinking about it, I have a question for you. Yeah. Because I was, I, I've worked with a lot of movie stars and stuff, and, and I was wondering, because I know you guys open, sometimes Wilco's open for like these giant yeah so like if you open for like bob right you've opened for the stones right stones dylan dylan Young, so if yeah. you open for like a giant like do you ever have any interaction with them or is it just like they keep you separated are they just like let's do totally their show totally depends stones or it's like they come back show? and go like hey you guys are great we yeah. love you let's, depends let's on the per do drugs totally or they just the like <laughs> like yeah <laughs> let's do drugs. you were like completely set. what what's no. like what's met mccartney the stones came back hung out for a little bit um very little bit but yeah. they came came back and said hello neil young completely accessible hanging out like all do the they time. watch your set all, do you five think? weeks Never met him, but not real. Like you, five you, weeks? So for five wow. weeks, you're about to let never meet. Um, that's come amazing. On. Everyone wants a piece of that guy yeah, right. for, for like 40, 50 years. Like, you got to understand that. But like, like, does Neil Young watch your set? Do you think? Like, did he watch your set? I you think? think he probably has. Maybe one of the nights. That's I'm cool. sure he has. Maybe that's not. Cool. I don't know. Because some people, you know, like you like the quiet time before you perform. Right. A lot of, you know, I, I totally understand that as sure. well. Sometimes you just need to get in your own headspace and prepare for what's coming up. So if the opening band's on, you may love them, but that doesn't mean you're always going to check them out. So I completely understand that. Everyone's got... Is there anyone you Everyone's got their own pace. You haven't toured with that you want to tour? Yes, that's a great question. Ooh. Is it like as an opener with Wilco or with just... Whatever it is. Uh, anyone I don't you know. I've always... With. Yeah, I don't know. I've always... Um, you know, all those people I highly respect that I would just name, but... Um, David Byrne is one that I've always really oh, respected. My and very favorite performer. Yeah, yes, yeah. very favorite yeah. performer. That would be that would be great too. But yeah, no, I'm just. I wonder the same for Mark because you've worked with a lot of actors, but you know your roles with them, big star actors, but your roles mm -hmm. with them were in smaller parts. Well, sure, right. And are they accessible, easy to yeah, talk to? Yeah, mostly. I mean, everyone sort of at some point sort of knows kind of the. Like the game of the moments, like okay, let's do this scene together. We're just gonna, you know, we'll pass the time, we'll do this, and then we'll move on, you know. Yes. But the bigger the star is, I've always found the nicer, do you know, because they know oh, it's weird. True. Like, like for yeah, me, like if true. you work with some like middling star, they but like, like if you work with like Warren Beatty, they'll come up to you and go, "Hi, I'm Warren," and you go like, okay, "Like I didn't know." Okay, <laughs> hi, I'm. Mark. But because they know it's so weird, you know. So like they'll introduce themselves, and you'll be, and they'll be normal with you. And, and, but most everyone's been pretty nice and cool and... Yeah. Who Have you ever had any make-out scenes? <laughs> I made out with Kim Cattrall. 
No, you actually had sex with Kim Cattrall. Yes. Sex in the City. Yes. I did. Yes. Did we Wait, how was that? Actually, uh, actually <laughs> there's some, there's a little bit of too much of me Ooh, that you, you that one bad. can see. Oh. Um, do they like? What's is that called? in the contract? Fluffing? Yeah, yeah, there is a contract, and there's like a thing what you can. No, I didn't. Wasn't that naked? But it was like. You, no, did, were they? I, oh, was, was that just fluffed. that part? It was not fluffed. It wasn't a. It's Sex in the City. You're just. It's. It's pretend. I didn't well, really have sex with Kim Cattrall. No, no, it's no. Act. I mean. <laughs> wait, do I know what fluffing is? Yes, fluffing apparently does, you do. No, don't they like just powder your butt? Like. Oh, I thought well, that's not what fluffing is. What's fluffing? <laughs> that powdering is powdering. <laughs> fluffing is fluffing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good night, Very everybody. Yes. <laughs> so how, how was everybody on the set cool. of Sex and the City? They were great. The, there's two things, but the Sex and the City, the first thing you need to know is that those girls never wear those. All that show is is girl, they're in hugs. All the time. Till one yeah. second before they shoot, and they yeah. put on their side. They're never in those high heels ever. Uh, you know? just yeah. yeah, but for like it's like and, and rolling, and they put on their heels. Yes. But um, I had the good fortune of uh, being on the most popular television show in America as a character named Limp Dick. So I uh, was. So the, they the, didn't uh, love you. So the very next, you know, like, so like I was in LA and you'd like I would go like I remember the very next day it was on I walked into like a mailboxes etc. And to ma and the guy's like limp dick and I'm like you know just mail my oh. package. I just really I just please just th th give me this much. Um, but no, that, that was, there's most of the stars I, I would say like the bigger the like a Neil Young like that. Right. I would find that people who were insecure about their place are uh, that way, but if exactly. you're really a, like a major, you're comfortable and you're cool, yes. and it was, a, I've always had good experiences. Yes, yes, the, any, any horror the stories? For either of you, because you both worked with lots of celebrities. God, Cindy Lauper was a nightmare. Really? <laughs> no, she, I like her. Nice like, person. I don't do yeah. like her. Cindy. I don't think I ever... She talked and, t oh wait, I'm kind of doing that too, but no. <laughs> <laughs> she talked and talked, like, we know, like, there's there's a natural, like, separation. Like, it's like, Eric and I were, we kept, like, we kept trying to, like, get, like, get in, like, get a word in. And we just, we didn't want to be rude, really. And so we just tried, we just let her go. And we just, we looked at each other, we're like, just let her go. There, it's lost. <laughs> just let her go. She literally talked for 10 minutes solid. And we just had to let no her go. No give and take. No. Just Cindy. Just let her do her thing. She was wacky. But I kind of like that about her. Yeah, well, that's her trademark, is being very wacky. Yeah. Anyone and difficult? You know what? And I, I probably shouldn't tell this story because it was a long time ago, and I'm sure he's changed. But... Um, but. No. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg, when... Um, he had some stuff, it was years ago, and he had some stuff going on, and a lot of times the PR people were like, you can't talk to him about this, you can't talk to him about that, don't bring up this. We're like, okay. So Eric is very creative in sneaking in somehow. Like when Jessica Simpson and Nick Lachey broke up, he's like, you could not mention the Simps Jessica Simpson. Do not bring her up. So he very creatively said something about, who's your favorite Simpson? Bart, Mart, whatever the Simpsons are, March, um, and named all the Simpsons. And he just kind of winked at, Nick Lachey winked at us and said, that's funny. So Eric's very coy about that. But with Mark Wahlberg, he pretty much came right out and asked the question he wasn't supposed to ask. All of a sudden, click. <laughs> he oh, hung, hung up on up. us. Oh. Or his handler or somebody hung up on us. And I don't know if it was Mark Wahlberg. I think that he's changed a lot since then. Because like you said, that was when he was like at that yeah. medium level. He's kind of a bigger star now. And once they do get to that level of big star, they have handlers that can take care of people like us. <laughs> 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 and you, any great stories? I mean, besides the fact that the Stones Neil, came to talk to And the Stones came out, and Neil Young hung out with you. That's um, that's yeah, pretty that's cool. Pretty great, yeah. Hang out because I, I imagine Neil Young to be like, dude, let's have a beer. I mean, was he that sort of hang when you say hang out? He like, um, like well, I mean, up when, a chair? when you do the Bridge School uh, benefit, which he's done forever, it's it benefits a school um, in San Francisco uh, area, and he has this major fundraiser every year. A lot of bands play it, but he always, and what a testament to what an amazing man he is. He has all the people who perform, which are, you know, maybe eight to ten different acts, varying size from, you know, major, major stars to kind of unknown bands, but um, he has them all over to his house. For, Do you see the model train barn? 
What's that? Did you see the train barn? The train bar? Yeah, doesn't he have a big model train in this? Oh, his yeah, room? Really oh no, I, did, I didn't yeah, see the barn. Somewhere. barn. No, yeah. okay. I, I thought, thought you said talk, bar. Sorry. Like, yeah. He brings some. No, it was to the just in his house. Barn, and didn't see the barn. Yeah. No. Does he talk the way he sings? No. That's what I always wonder about Getty Lee. But, uh, about who? No, that's a, that's, a, that's, that's a pavement song. Anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, one, one quick question before we end for the night, because I know we've gone a little bit over. Favorite thing you're going to grill on the, on the grill this summer? One word from each oh. of you. Is pork chop one word? Pork chop, one word. <laughs> Kathy. Ham hock. <laughs> Chef. Short ribs. Short ribs, sorry. Meat, it's meat, all hyphenated meat. words. You've got okay. you to hyphenate. <laughs> Asparagus. Ah, <laughs> I'm looking forward to pineapple with uh, sea salt. Thank you, everybody, for coming. I hope that you're going to stick around, because we're going to stick around, so stay and drink with us. I want you to look at the, at the monitor. So many people work on this show, so really thank you to all of them. Thank you to City Winery, because they really know what they're doing. Remember to fill out your things on your table so we can hear what you thought about the show. Uh, usually, we take the summer off. But the city of Chicago, the, the Department of Cultural Affairs, has asked me to bring the dinner party to Grant Park. So, Yay. mark your calendars. So July 10th, we're going to be part of, be part of Taste of Chicago. The dinner party is going to be part of something called Chef Du Jour, the Chef Du Jour tent. So they're building a whole huge tent. Chefs are going to be cooking. It's going to be a dinner party. It'll be really fun. So mark your calendars July 10th. Otherwise, we take the summer off. We'll see you in September, or we'll see you July 10th. I want to thank my guests. Mark Grapey. <laughs> Kathy Hart. <laughs> Chef B. Conan, cooking for us from the games. Everybody hit the gates this summer. And the very intellectual, Glenn Kochi, a Wilco percussionist composer, foodie. My name is Elizabeth Albano. Thank you for coming, everybody. Your energy just gives us so much to work with on stage. It's great to have you here. We'll see you in the audience as we come down to chat. Yay. We take these off. <laughs> <laughs>